Hello and welcome to another update video about FSLR. We take a look at this stock today, take a look at the updated Elliott Wave count. And yeah, we have to start here at the all time low in 2012. We see there was an initial 1-2 setup which started this uptrend that's been ongoing ever since. And uh, the wave 1 topped in April 2014 at around $74. The wave 2 bottomed in 2017 at around $25.30. The idea is now that we completed most likely a third wave. So the third wave basically just about reached the 1.236 extension. That's okay in a diagonal, it's a bit weak, but it's acceptable. Uh, best count I've got at the moment. And we then started a wave four. So the idea is that this is overall a diagonal pattern. If I was only looking at the beginning here, then I could get away with counting this as a one, two and a one, two setup. So a more bullish, directly bullish 1-2 setup, which would lead to really high projections going forward. However, it doesn't really add up in terms of proportions and what happened here and that the pullback. And then also here, you know, the pullback that we've got, it looks better as a diagonal structure, which means, doesn't, doesn't mean it's bearish. It just means that it's more difficult maybe to trade, more difficult to really accurately um, forecast the patterns because in a diagonal in which we're dealing with ABC structures, we just have to be on our toes due to the corrective structures in the subwaves. So they can change a lot. It's a feature of corrective waves, completely normal, because for example, you can see here that we might be in a B wave right now. And this B wave, for example, can take, I mean, 10 different patterns. There's, it's impossible to say which one it is in advance. So that's just always the expectation um, one has to have when we're dealing with diagonal patterns. Maybe not to trade it aggressively until we see a clear impulsive pattern maybe within the diagonal. Still trade it, of course, you know, if you want to do it. But um, just be aware that diagonals don't offer that precision. Maybe leave the trades a little bit more space, you know, and be aware that um, pullbacks could occur where they normally shouldn't in an impulse now in this third wave, we have an ABC structure that completed an A wave in 2021. Then we had another B wave pullback and another C wave rally. So you could also label that as a WXY. It doesn't really make a great difference. Um, the problem is if you label it as WXY, um, WXY, yeah, it's possible. But that's just the academic side of it. It doesn't make any, any difference. Um, it's corrective and I label that as the completion of wave three. Yeah, and it seems like we've now entered wave four. I mean, I remember, I think months ago, maybe even half a year ago, I covered FSLR and the support area was already on the chart unchanged because the price since then never made a new top. So we've entered that support zone. I think the microstructure changed, but the overall support zone hasn't. So the idea is if we go to the daily chart now, that we're in this fourth wave. If it's a fourth wave in a diagonal, then an ideal target for the A wave is typically the 23.6 FIB level. We've reached that now. The B wave, I mean, it might be complete, okay? It might be complete and it's worth watching for the onset or the continuation of wave C, which could target now $103.20 next, but only as long as this swing high stays intact at $178. What happens if we break below, uh, break above it? Well, very simple. We would just reset the B wave a little bit higher. Yeah. So at the moment though, I think we can be watching if the B wave topped already. However, it's not that, you know, it's not the case that this B wave has already maxed out what it can do. No, it's actually, let me double check something. Wave five needs to sit here. So we can draw a standard or we can add the standard resistance zone to the chart here. And it's between the 50% and the 78.6 FIB level. So it reached the 50%. I mean, that's okay for a B wave. Can always go a little stronger, right? I mean, it would not be unusual for a B wave to reach the 78.6 FIB level, maybe even overshoot. But that would be um, not anything I'm looking for primarily right now. It's just whenever we're dealing with corrective structures, as I said, 
worth to keep an open mind. So let's label the subwaves. The idea would be that, yep, this A wave was also a three wave move. We can see that, that's a corrective pattern. Whenever that's the case, you know, it's possible that the overall correction is already finished. Again, nothing I'm primarily watching for, because that would mean this fourth wave was very, very shallow. Untypical for a fourth wave in a diagonal, yeah? So I'm still watching for a more extended fourth wave primarily. You could say it's a reasonable alternative that the fourth wave already bottomed. Eventually, whenever they reach these support zones, it is possible that they turn around. But I would prefer that we're heading a little bit lower into the support area, either directly or after an extended B wave, which could test next 185.50 or 204.68. So if we now label the C wave itself, we can identify potentially here an initial wave one, which is now moving up in wave two. And it could carry on like that. Let me just change the wave degree here. But I just already gave you a very clear invalidation point for this wave two. I mean, at the moment, there's no sign that the wave three to the downside has started. No sign at all. So we will get a first indication if we see a break below $141.70, this swing low that was formed on the 26th of um, Feb. Yeah. And um, until then, you know, short term trend seems to be up. And if the wave two doesn't turn here, instead takes out that last high at around $170, $179.40, well, it would indicate that this larger B wave or an extended B wave is unfolding. Yeah wouldn't be unusual. So that would be yeah, what I would be watching for first if that level is taken out. But against that level, the focus can be on the downside. I'm not, I don't have a strong leaning that the C wave has started already because the, um, because the B wave only reached a 50% FIB level. Now that's perfectly acceptable, but they have a tendency to extend. They have a tendency to extend. So um, yeah, and then as soon as we have a third wave run, so basically any five wave move now to the downside, especially if we take out that last swing low, would confirm or suggest that this, uh, the third wave to the downside has started. Either way, I don't have any confirmation at the moment that the entire wave four is complete. But also in all scenarios, yeah, we have an overall um, opportunity still for a fifth wave to the upside, which could reach 261.62. And if that level breaks, 342.39, but possibly not after, and that's at least what's expected, a more extended fourth wave has, um, has unfolded. You know? So it's this area in general where a reversal can happen, but probably we go a little bit lower in wave C, or if we see a first clear one, two setup or a five wave move up, that would suggest that the fourth, the fifth wave has already started, but then it's not visible right now. It's an overall chart that we give a bullish chance. Okay. It's not very clearly bullish because it's only a diagonal, so it can always fail. Okay. So that's, I think, um, you know, highlights a lot about the quality of the chart overall, but still we can give it a chance. I think it's reasonable. And the wave four should in all likelihood be a bit more extended. Yeah, but be aware that B waves um, need constant monitoring so they can be more aggressive than you might think. That's my update about FSLR. Hope you liked the update. If you did, please hit the like button, leave a comment and subscribe. And if you're interested in daily updates about the S&P 500, as well as regular updates about stocks, then please check out the stocks and S&P 500 service You'll find the link in the description. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye-bye.